Hey guys. So this morning while I was getting ready for work, um, I was listening to Sarah Finley, Fiery Girl for Christ. And uh, she just blessed me, guys, um, and really helped make things clear about why ministry is about ministering reconciliation and ministering Christ and not law. Um, you know, when you're hurting, when you're broken, when you feel heavy burdened, who can minister to you? Who can help you? You know, is it someone that seems to have it all together and they're talking about how you should be doing this or that and uh, they've got it, you know, why can't you have it right? Um, and they're focusing on behavior and things like that? Or do you go to fellow people who are broken and have come to the end of their own righteousness and they know they can't do a darn thing and that it's all Christ and they have no choice but to lean on Him and He's real to them and He's real in their lives. And they can extend that grace and mercy and light of Christ in His Word to you, the one who's hurting. You know, when I got up this morning and was reading my Bible, I read in Isaiah you know, prophecy of Jesus where he said that a bruised reed he would not break and a smoldering wick he would not snuff out. And we are like bruised reeds, guys, <laughs> you know. Um, until I finally came to the end of myself and grabbed hold of Christ, I was no good to minister to anybody. I could give them practical advice about how they could live uh, to to be pleasing to the Lord and things like that. That's all I could give them. But there, it wasn't coming, it wasn't Christ himself, it wasn't the one that is able and has the power to actually heal the hurting and uh, light, ignite the fire in the, in the smoldering wick and understands the worst of what you could possibly go through because he went through it. And you, when you, when you have it all together or you're trying to get everybody else around you to get it all together and behave a certain way and it's about commandments and moral standards it's not comforting and helpful to people that are broken and have just come to the end of themselves and realize they cannot do it they cannot do it um that they are a failure that their flesh fails every time. You know, there's people that come to me, brothers and sisters, <clears throat> that come to me, uh, send me emails and things. And these are hurting people that struggle, you know, with a failure and addiction. And they know, they already know what they should do. They know what's right. They know what's wrong. But feeling condemned about it and just being told it's wrong. And why are you living like that? You're a Christian. Why are you struggling with that? You're a Christian. How does that help them? You know? Um, we're to bear one another's burdens, not place burdens on each other. You know, we could just tell tell people, hey, I know I can't do it either. I have no strength. I, I praise God for my weakness and my failure because in that, he is made strong. You know, that's what Paul said. Um, in fact, God forbid I will be strong and self-righteous. When... When I was saved, but kind of worried about, you know, thinking along the line of I'm working for reward and acceptance for God by, by following commandments, not fully resting in him 
and realizing I have nothing to offer. I wasn't reckoning my flesh dead. I was doing some dead works. And he showed me that. You know, he showed me that with those repetitive dreams I had of the fruit that looked so good and big and ripe on the tree. When I picked it, it was empty, hollow, and rotten. You know, um, that's the outside things that have no substance and no food. Christ is the food, you know. Uh, the fruit he produces in and through us is the food that can nourish others in Christ. It's real spiritual food. It's not a pretend game. All these people that are saying, with the help of God, you can keep the commandments. Are you really keeping them? Are you really? Look at yourself and be honest with yourself. Are you really keeping them? You know? Um, if I am able to keep any at all, it's not me. It's Christ. So what, what bragging or boasting point do I have? You know? Um, and I can't look down on others ever. Disqualify them or think they're unworthy of anything. Any prize, any reward, any love, any uh, encouragement because they're failing in some way. You know, we've all already failed and been judged worthy of death. Um, but Christ has said we are accepted in the beloved. Every one of us. And there's no disqualifiers. If you believe on Jesus Christ, you're my brother or sister. And I love you. I accept you. And I don't judge or condemn you. Um, we all struggle. Uh, I just encourage people to, to uh, acknowledge the truth in the word about uh, his completed work and who, you, who they are in him now. And when people come to me, that's what I minister to them because that's, that's what I had to come to to be anything real or have any substance whatsoever of Christ to offer. All we have to offer people is Christ, you know? Uh, that's it. Uh, I'm not, uh, I, I count all the other stuff dung, all the show, all the fake, all the holier than thou church lady face. I count it all dung so that I can gain Christ and not having a righteousness of my own that is, that is by the law, you know, but what is real, what is a real light and has the power to, to heal and restore and, and just minister love to people. That's all I want. And um, guys, I don't have it all together. I can't do a darn thing. You can be sure of that. It's every bit of it, of anything I do is because I came to the absolute end of myself and my own righteousness. And every day I have to realize I, I'm not doing anything because if I start thinking I do, I start looking down on other Christians and thinking, well, why are they still doing that? You know, <laughs> and there's, there's nothing there, but a religious spirit. When you do that, that's not offering them anything. Um, so anyway, I just, I just wanted to share that. Uh, uh, love you, Sarah. Thank you for helping me get, clarity on that as well um you you just helped me see so clearly why ministry is what it is and I feel sorry for people that are struggling with uh, being in bondage to sin still and and they go to someone who seems to have it all together and is telling them you need to do this and do that because they're not going to find their answer there. They're only going to find failure and condemnation. But maybe that's what they need. You know, that's, that's what finally broke me. Listening to people like that and just breaking down in tears in absolute despair. And saying, well, I guess I'm going to go to hell. I can't be good enough for you, Lord. And that's when he told me, that's right. You're not good enough. You can never be good enough. But my son is, and he have, I've chosen you, and I have chosen to redeem you and clothe you in a robe of righteousness. <laughs> and praise God, it's like this huge weight was just lifted off my shoulders. And that's all I want to do for anybody else is lift that weight off of your shoulders. 
and show you the love of Christ. That's it. And, and help encourage you in the faith. That's all. All right. I love you guys. Be blessed.